I'm here with Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Alexander, it looks like we finally have our uh, first sightings. Actually, I would say our first audio recordings of uh, the <laughs> mysterious Maltese professor Mifsud. And uh, this comes courtesy of uh, John Solomon of The Hill, who is uh, breaking this story. And he was on Hannity and he explained a little bit of what was going on. But we've said it over a vast amount of videos that there are a lot of people that Mueller could have investigated and should have investigated. And there's a lot of people that uh, are still pending uh, investigation, pending that we're waiting to hear as to what, what was going on during the three-year Russiagate hoax. One of those people was the professor, the Maltese professor, Mifsud. And uh, now it looks like we may have some news coming out of this uh, this shadowy type of character. What's uh, what's the latest? Yes, this is a very interesting development, Alex. Now, for those who are new to these discussions, let's just explain who Professor Mifsud is. M professor Mifsud, Joseph Mifsud, is this mysterious Maltese professor who held all these important academic positions in Italy and in Britain, where he was a professor at the Stirling University in Scotland. And he also ran something called the London Diplomatic Academy, a very strange shell organization, which doesn't seem to have actually done it, done anything, but which had very, very swanky offices in London. And in the um, autumn of 2015, the early winter of 2016, he got in touch with George Papadopoulos, this young 28 year old junior uh, Donald Trump campaign uh, aide who was assigned to London, again, for unspecified reasons, Mifsud had contacted Papadopoulos, told Papadopoulos that he had all these important contacts in Russia. It turned out he didn't, but that was the story he peddled. Showed to Papadopoulos a young woman, an attractive young woman, who he said was Vladimir Putin's niece. She wasn't. Vladimir Putin doesn't have a niece. Uh, um, put Papadopoulos in touch with a Russian member of an informal NGO called the Valdai Club, and most important of all, met with Papadopoulos at a hotel in London near Liverpool Street Station, where he is supposed to have told Papadopoulos that he'd just come from, London, from Moscow, this is in March 2016, and he discovered that the Russians had dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of Clinton emails. Now, the official story peddled by the FBI under James Comey and accepted by Robert Mueller is that Joseph Mifsud was a Russian intelligence asset, that he was reaching out to George Papadopoulos. And that word of this meeting in Liverpool Street reached in Liverpool, this hotel in Liverpool Street reached uh, the FBI via Alexander Downer, the Australian High Commissioner, who had a very strange meeting a few weeks later with Papadopoulos in London, and that it was this meeting between Mifsud and Papadopoulos at this hotel in London near Liverpool Street Station, which supposedly kicked off the Russiagate investigation. Now, we have cast serious doubt upon that. So has George Papadopoulos, who has given a series of brilliant interviews in which he has pointed out that virtually every part of this official narrative is false, that certainly he was in touch with Mifsud, but that Mifsud clearly wasn't the person that he pretended to be. And we have speculated, and in fact, not just we, but lots of other people have speculated, including people like Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump's lawyer, and of course, Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity, but many, many others, that Mifsud, so far from being a Russian intelligence asset, was probably an intelligence asset 
of some Western intelligence agency. And that all these strange maneuvers that were taking place in London in the early winter of 2016 were a provocation, a sting intended to implicate Papadopoulos so as to get at Trump and to construct this narrative that Donald Trump was somehow in collusion with the Russians. That's how it looked. Now, what has happened is that Mueller, as you absolutely rightly say, never interviewed Papadopoulos throughout his investigation. This despite the fact that it was, Pap that it was uh, sorry, that he never interviewed Mifsud throughout his investigation. This despite the fact that Mifsud is supposed to have been the person who started this whole thing. And we were asked to believe that Mifsud had disappeared and could no longer be found and had vanished off the face of the earth. And again, we doubted it. Now, what has happened is that John Solomon, the outstanding investigative reporter on Russiagate, says that there is now an audio tape deposition. That's a, uh, uh, a tape recording, which is a statement made on oath, which Mifsud has provided to William Barr's investigators, headed by John Durham, who are looking into the origins of Russiagate and how this bizarre hoax got going. And it seems this audio tape has also been provided to Senator Lindsey Graham, who is the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And from what John Solomon has hinted at, this audio tape explains who Mifsud is, explains who actually instructed Mifsud to get in touch with Papadopoulos, and gives an account of what really happened. Now, I am here going to be very careful. I'm, I'm not putting words into John Solomon's mouth, but my understanding of what he was saying, more from the tone than from his words, is that Mifsud is saying in this tape that whoever it was who instructed him to get in touch with Papadopoulos, it wasn't the Russians. Well, of course, it was not the Russians. I think we, we pretty much know, mm. just about know who instructed Mifsud to, to kick off this entire hoax. And yes. uh, Jim Jordan hinted at the fact that Mifsud was the, the spark that that's lit the flame of this Russiagate investigation. Yes. And, uh, you know, he, he really let uh, Mueller have it for not yes. interviewing Mifsud. Papadopoulos, when he was speaking with Mark Stein, he mentioned that this was a dangle operation, yes. which is a common uh, word used. I imagine it's a common word used in uh, in the spy spy circles. Mifsud was was part of that dangle operation, correct, Alexander? He, he, he was the one that that trapped one part of the trap set for Papadopoulos as he was in the United Kingdom. That is exactly right. Now, it, it's need to, we need to go back a little to understand this business with Papadopoulos because we've done several videos on this. And of course, Papadopoulos himself has given an superb account of it in his video uh, uh, video meetings with Mark Stein. But essentially, Pavadopoulos, when he arrived in London, this is in 2015, late 2015, well before the election, was suddenly the subject of this extraordinary amount of attention from all sorts of people. Amongst the people he met was Stefan Halper, who is this academic, supposed academic, working at Cambridge University. It is now universally accepted, in fact, it's admitted officially, Stefan Halper was a FBI informer. He was a spy. He was a spy for the British and for the Americans. And he also met this mysterious man, Professor Mifsud. And what Papadopoulos is saying, and he has described all his meetings with Mifsud in extraordinary detail. What Papadopoulos is saying is that it was a dangle. In other words, Mifsud was giving him all these contacts 
which was supposed to be with the Russians, but which weren't really. He was telling Papadopoulos the Russians have all this dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of Hillary Clinton's emails in order to get Papadopoulos and the Trump campaign he was working for to establish certain connections which could be traced to Russia and which would be politically damaging to Trump, which would show up Trump, in other words, as being either in collusion with Russia or ready to get into collusion with Russia. And in fact, that didn't happen. And the second part of the dangle was the closing of the trap because uh, Papadopoulos was then invited to this meeting in a wine bar, very expensive wine bar, which I visited in Chelsea, uh, by the High Commissioner of, of Australia, a person who is also widely suspected of having intelligence connections, Alexander Downer. And supposedly, Alexander Downer uh, heard him say at this meeting, at this wine bar, about this meeting that Papadopoulos had had with Mifsud and about Mifsud's offer of the uh, um, information about the emails that the Russians supposedly had of Clinton's. Now, it's important to say again that Papadopoulos himself denies or, or doesn't remember saying anything to Downer about his meeting with Mifsud. And... Papadopoulos has also said that he knows for a fact that Downer was recording that conversation and it seems as if that has also been admitted and that Downer's recording of the conversation with Papadopoulos has also been provided to Durham and presumably to Lindsey Graham and it exonerates Papadopoulos. So we have an extraordinary interesting developments here. More proof that there was a, a trap, a trap was sprung involving Papadopoulos intended to damage and implicate Donald Trump, that this trap failed. It didn't work out as whoever it was who was laying the trap was intending and with Mifsud apparently disclosing in this uh, audio tape who it was, who he was working for, and who presumably laid the trap. All very, very interesting stuff. <laughs> a very intricate trap. And I mean, you have the United States deep state, you have the UK deep state, you have the Australian deep state. So it looks like you have all these countries part of the Five Eyes colluding and collaborating together to... Uh, essentially derail the presidency of uh, Donald Trump. That's, I mean, that's, exactly that's, ex right. that's exactly what it looks like. And uh, now you have the investigators. You have the DOJ investigating the investigators. Are we going to see the light of day for all these audio recordings? Are these going to be published? Are we going to get a clear, transparent view as to what was going on? The real collusion, the yes. real election meddling that yeah. was going on. I think we are going to see these. I mean, uh, uh, the, the president, Donald Trump, has given William Barr massive declassification powers. I see no reason why this tape recording of MIFSA should not be declassified. And I predict at some point it will be. But I'm going to say a couple of other things here. Firstly, um, you missed out one key player in the catalogue of deep states that you were mentioning, Britain, the, the United States, Australia. These are the various intelligence agencies. But Mifsud has a connection with the Clinton Foundation. I mentioned, I merely mentioned that. Uh, of course we don't he does. Yet know, we don't yet know exactly <laughs> what, you know, we don't exactly know what the yeah. nature of that connection was, but he had one. As does Alexander Downer. As does Alexander Downer. So there we go. So there's, we don't yet, as I said, I want to make it clear uh, in case anybody's watching, you know, with a pencil and a note paper, we're not actually drawing any inferences from this, but it is an interesting fact which needs to be logged 
uh, and, and kept to one side, and which we will no doubt see whether it has any weight attached to it when we see what Durham reports. But as I said, Mesut undoubtedly was involved with the Clinton Foundation, as, of course, was uh, 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 Downer. But can I say, yes, I am sure we will get these audio tapes. I am sure we will also hear the audio tapes of Papadopoulos, the one that obviously Downer made. But there was some suggestions from Papadopoulos that the meeting he had with Mifsud in the hotel in Liverpool Street was also recorded, not perhaps just by Mifsud, but there may have been all sorts of interesting people there keeping an eye on what they were saying and perhaps recording what they were saying. So we may have, there may be many more recordings than we know about. But when, why, now that we're on the subject of recordings, I just want to point out how strange the fact that Mifsud has given an audio tape recording rather than a written statement is, because it suggests to me that he is still resisting meeting with the FBI and with Durham's investigators. It looks to me as if this recording was provided by his lawyer rather than recorded in an interview by the FBI themselves. That's not the usual way, I think, that the FBI would operate in this. I'm sure they record conversations, but I would guess that they're more, they would be more likely to make written statements. The fact that we have a deposition in the form of a tape recording suggests to me that this is something that um, Mifsud has provided to his lawyer who has passed it on to Durham and that in fact we are still at a fairly early stage of the interactions between Durham's investigators in Mifsud and Mifsud and that Mifsud is to some extent still hiding. Now if he is still hiding that suggests to me that someone is protecting him. Well, I, mean, I think we know who protecting him, obviously. Or concealing him, if you will. Concealing if you will. him. I mean, just uh, pick, uh, pick pick your deep state well, spy I agency. I think you could even throw Italy, Italy in there as well. We could throw Italy, yeah. we must, and we must add Britain. Because as I said, yeah. all of these... All Britain, of these actors, Italy, Australia, US, Australia, could lump exactly. in Ukraine as well. Uh, they, uh, they, they were involved it, in all of this. It, it, Indeed. But I, I have to say that I think that, I mean, the, the rumours are that he's in Rome uh, uh, and that he's hiding in Rome somewhere. But uh, the other rumours, which look to me very sound, tend to link Mifsud with British intelligence. And if he was a British intelligence asset, then British intelligence being part of the Five Eyes Alliance, it seems to me that the British might be in a position to at least resist, at least initially, requests from the Justice Department for a meeting between the Justice Department's investigators and one of their operatives, in other words, with Mifsud. So if, if and I, I guess, you know, I want to stress here, we are speculating quite a lot now, but I think these are well-founded speculations. If it is the case that Durham's investigators have not yet actually interviewed Mifsud and that this is a preemptive strike by Mifsud providing this audio tape in the form that we said in order to try and keep questions, further questions at bay, then that suggests to me very strongly that he is a British intelligence asset and that the British are for the moment refusing to make him available for interrogation by the FBI. Oh, the FBI needs to... The oh. FBI, the DOJ, the DOJ needs to get to Mifsud ASAP and get whatever information they can out of oh, him. Okay. Steele, Assange, we've, we've, we've given the names before of all the people that need to be interviewed who could provide real answers as uh, to what uh, happened. Alex, Alex, I have absolutely no doubt that sooner or later, uh, 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 sooner rather than later, they will. If they be, haven't interviewed Mifsud, they will do so. Be, because, because this is my question to you. Because now you have Boris Johnson as the UK Prime Minister, and not Theresa May, who was begging Trump, begging Trump not to release these documents, because Theresa yeah. May knew that those documents showed that her government, her deep state, her intelligence agencies were indeed meddling in the U.S. elections and were indeed trying to undermine the Trump administration, the Trump White House, 
Now Boris Johnson is in charge. Boris Johnson has a much different relationship with Trump. Is he going to cooperate? Yes. I, I, I want to say this, first of all, I mean, Donald uh, Boris Johnson wants a trade deal with the United States to replace the financial and trading arrangements with the EU, which will end with Brexit, which he's planning to end with Brexit. So that already gives Donald Trump enormous leverage. But can I say something? At the end of the day, he who pays the piper calls the tune. The United States pays British uh, intelligence, just its uh, G just GCHQ, its uh, uh, you know big listening station, its equivalent to the NSA. It pays them twelve billion dollars a year. The British are in no position to say no to the Americans if the Americans insist on meeting with and speaking to and questioning Mifsud. The British can resist for a while, but sooner or later, the Americans will speak to Mifsud. And I am going to say it again, it will be sooner than sooner rather than later. This uh, um, audio tape may be a delaying tactic, but it's not going to throw uh, um, Durham and Barr off the scent. I, I mean, they will now, I'm sure, be pressing the British, if it is the British, extremely hard on Mifsud, because as you absolutely rightly said, both at the start of this programme and subsequently, Mifsud is the key to the whole thing. All right, Alexander Becker is editor-in-chief of Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. And you can donate to this channel via PayPal, Patreon, and we are now on Subscribestar. The links to those platforms are in the description box down below. And you can also get a copy of this video in audio format. Follow us on iTunes and SoundCloud as well. And of course, you can read up on all the things Russiagate related. We have two eBooks, two eBooks with a very special price. Both those eBooks have a forward written by Alexander and you can get those at the Duran shop. And while you're downloading, while you're purchasing those eBooks, those downloadable eBooks, pick up a mug, pick up a polo shirt, an embroidered polo shirt, pick up a V-neck, pick up a t-shirt, pick up a hat. We have great merchandise with our original double-headed eagle designs. <laughs> Alexander. Can I, can, I, can, I just, can I just take over for you there, Alex? I mean, first of all, we've just described on this video what an intricate business Russiagate is. And the purpose of our two eBooks is to make it all very simple and very clear. So if you get these two eBooks, you can listen to our programs. You can listen to what John Solomon is saying on Hannity or Tucker Carlson is saying on Fox or wherever. And you will understand it because it's all so confused and muddled the way that it's always presented with this enormous galaxy of, of characters involved. I mean, it's, it's a cast of thousands almost. In reality, Russiagate is so simple. It was an attempt by the deep state, the intelligence community, the Democratic Party, obviously, um, British intelligence, quite probably, the media. It was an attempt to install Hillary Clinton as president of the United States, even though it was obvious that the American people didn't want her. And it was also an attempt to discredit her opponent, Donald Trump, by implicating him with the Russians. And this is what one ebook is all about. And the other ebook, which is on Russiagate, is all about the way when that first plot failed, they moved to the second plot, which is the Mueller investigation, partly intended to conceal the first plot, partly intended to continue to discredit Trump, and how it too fell apart when William Barr, Attorney General of the United States, finally came into office and pulled the whole thing to a stop. So if you want to understand Russiagate, go to our ebooks. And we also, by the way, have a great ebook on Brexit, which is really boiling up now. And that, too, tries to explain and simplifies that very complicated story of Brexit and explains the remainder plot, 
which is trying to stop Brexit and the enormous political ba uh, uh, backlash that has inspired. So how can we do videos like that uh, uh, and write books like this if we didn't drink from mugs like this? Now, I'm drinking because this is a complicated and difficult subject. I am uh, drinking one of China's greatest teas. This is uh, um, an oolong tea. Uh, um, uh, it, it's, it's a red tea. It was made for one of the great Ming emperors in the 16th century. Um, it's, I can't really show it because I'd spill it if I did, but it's a sort of red color. It's enormously refreshing on a bizarre day that we're having at the moment where it's sometimes raining, sometimes hot, and it's drunk from this perfect, beautiful Durand mug, 15 ounces, perfect porcelain. This one, we've got all these various designs on, on it. This one is the design. This is not our double-headed eagle. This is the double-headed eagle of Moscow with St. George uh, slaying the dragon of fake news and untruth. And what bigger piece of fake news has there been over the last four years than Russiagate? So that's what St. George does. That's what the Duran does. And we do it wearing... Shirts like this, this marvelous polo shirt with my embroidered uh, double-headed eagle. This is not the double-headed eagle of Russia or of Moscow. This is our double-headed eagle. Points to the east and the west because we're a geopolitical website. We cover all sorts of territories, 100% cotton, incredibly comfortable. It's only one shirt amongst many. This is only one mug amongst many. We have lots of other really superb works of pieces of merchandise. We've got shirts, we've got hats, we've got uh, 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 stickers, we've got wonderful things. So help yourself. Help the Duran, go to our shop, Alex will tell you how. Just look in the description box and you will find the link to the Duran shop, the DuranShop.com. Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.